Wojciech Kofante was the greatest leader of the Polish community in Upper Silesia, one of the most industrialized regions in Europe in the early 20th century. The Upper Silesians had lived for 600 years outside of Poland. They have been known for their strong character, hard work and pragmatism. Not so much for their romantic spirit, like many other Poles. Perhaps Kofante would have not become a pro-Polish activist had it not been for his education at a German school, where all expressions of Polishness had been strictly prohibited. He was even thrown out of high school in his graduation year for not demonstrating enough respect to the Chancellor of the German Empire, Otto von Bismarck. Kofante carried Poland in his heart, and even though Poland did not exist on the political map of Europe, he decided to fight for her. He got involved with the Polish national movement and set up Polish organizations. He had a way with words and knew very well how to speak to workers and how to win women's hearts too. In 1903, at the age of 30, Kofante became a member of the German Reichstag after a bodacious campaign. He strongly relied on publicity and the media of the time. He would attract attention by sending postcards with his image or by starting his own newspaper. He even developed his own brand of vodka and cigarettes and labeled them with his name. He took advertising by storm. When Germany lost the First World War and the Polish state was about to be reborn, he launched a campaign in the region of Wielkopolska, that is, Greater Poland, to diplomatically support the uprising against the occupying Germans. It is thanks to his negotiation skills that the Poles kept the regions that had been Polish for centuries. In the wake of the First World War, the Allied powers got to decide on the future shape of Poland's borders, and they held a plebiscite in Upper Silesia, with Kofante as the plebiscite's commissioner. Kofante then led another dynamic campaign, promising better working conditions to laborers and agrarian reform to peasants. Still, Germans won the plebiscite in the atmosphere of public intimidation, having brought in the region some additional 180,000 German voters born in Upper Silesia. It was then that Kofante took the lead in the Third Silesian Uprising against the German terror. It wasn't before long that the Polish insurgents soon achieved dominance over the German volunteers. Despite the fierce battles, Kofante decided to order a ceasefire, not wanting to send his people to pointless death. Many Poles did not like the idea and were eager to continue the romantic fight. A practical man, Kofante knew that it was anyway the victorious Allied powers that determined everything. Eventually, the leaders of the alliance decided that only 30% of Upper Silesia would be incorporated into Poland. But it was precisely this patch of land that had the most of the region's mines and smelters. And thus, Silesia's rich resources propelled the reborn Polish state and became the source of the entire country's modernization efforts. If there is one thing Wojciech Kofante would teach us today, he would probably have said, if you want to serve your country, keep both feet on the ground. <laughs>